I got out, uh, graduated with a degree in political science. Wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do, much like uh, the college students of today. I have a lot of people ask me how I ever got in the television business. Um, it was a fluke, frankly. Uh, I had a good friend by the name of John Guthrie, who became the basketball coach at the University of Georgia, and they had decided in 1973 to put their games on public television in the state of Georgia. So he calls me and he says, would you come over and do our games for us? He and I were good friends even before he got here. And I said, yes, I'll do that. I don't know anything about television, but I know a lot about basketball. And then in 1977, uh, I went to work for a company called TVS. And again, you've got to understand, this was not a full-time uh, vocation with me. I just simply showed up to do these games and it was kind of a, an independent contractor, freelance independent contractor who did these games. And the first game I had was Florida Vandy for TVS. And uh, this is the first time I ever got paid. And uh, I find out very quickly that uh, this is a lot of fun. I think I could do this for a living. 1979 uh, was the year ESPN got started. And uh, they called me and offered me 19 games in the month of December and I thought they'd lost their minds. And uh, I ended up taking, I think, either five or six of those games. And that was the first, uh, the first month that ESPN flipped the switch and came on. If any of you remember, I mean, they had Australian rules football and college basketball. That's how they started. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get on the ground floor of that. There were lots of times we lost audio, we lost transmission lines, uh, we lost video. Uh, can I tell you all of the bugs we had in getting it started? Uh, it was not smooth, I will tell you that, but it was kind of exciting actually. I mean, all of a sudden, instead of just doing a Saturday game, which is what we used to do back in the 60s uh, and early 70s, uh, all of a sudden games were coming on in the middle of the week, which was just revolutionary. And uh, I was a part of that. And uh, to be a part of that was uh, very exciting. In fact, I tell the story, I still believe that Dick Vitale and I were the first two college analysts that they hired at ESPN. I probably, over the years, have received more critical letters from Kentucky fans than anybody, okay? Now, I've got to tell you, I've done these games all over the country, and no one knows the game as well as the Kentucky fans do. And they always wondered why I wasn't more partial toward Kentucky. And my answer is always, if I'm doing an SEC game, the University of Kentucky pays me one-twelfth of my salary. Now, that money actually came from Jefferson Pilot, Lincoln Financial, and eventually Raycom. But it was the schools I was doing the games for. You become institutionalized. You become a part of the institution, the institution of SEC basketball. And that's what we were, I mean, for all those decades that we did it. My basketball and baseball schedule had been cut back uh, dramatically. I don't do nearly as many games as I used to do. Uh, when you get to be the age that I am right now, you really don't want to do that many games. I mean, I did a lot for about, uh, well, 30-some years. I still enjoy the games. Uh, it's fun for me. Um, and the day it stops being fun is the day that I walk into the sunset and say, thank you very much. I have just had the best time anybody could possibly have.